very hot. Um, so here it does say she is a child of seven, but that's obviously not right now, so it's her and her little sister Adeline in the beginning. Um, and there's a tale, which is rather disturbing, in the beginning of the book, with her mother's brother, who is only eight years old. Her mother is only around maybe 19 or 20, working on the plantation. Her brother's name is George Lee. George Lee is rather abusive, as is with kind of the whole family. They're very aggressive. Um, they have a lot of stress. And while the mother and father were down working at the cotton uh, field, George Lee was babysitting. And eventually, somehow, um, the house caught fire. This was their only house. And uh, it just, everything was so dry. The wallpaper that was barely hanging to the wall just burnt up in an instant. The whole house was gone. Um, and they were on the top of the hill. There's like a little hill right here, and down below is the field. Her parents were working and saw the flames, freaked out, ran up, and um, basically George Lee just blamed it on the main character, Annie, or we call her in the beginning, Essie. I will get to that in a little bit. Her name is Essie May in the beginning. Change later on. So it's just that tale kind of describes a little of the emotions that go on here. Everyone's tense, everyone's angry, you know, money is scarce, you know, living conditions are awful. Um, and there's not really a lot that they can do about it, especially now that their house is gone, they have to find a new job. And this is not a great environment to grow up in. Okay, so I think at this point, I'm going to skip to when she's seven. And I think at this point she has another sibling named Junior, I believe. And she is in school. She's in second grade, and she, you know, she's moved into kind of a neighborhood. I think she's in Centerville at this point. And, you know, she has, there's the black part of the neighborhood, and there's the white part of the neighborhood. And she eventually got to know some of her neighbors, a boy and a girl, who were both white. And they would play together, and they would laugh, and, you know, they would learn things from each other. And then eventually, the kids were like, hey, do you want to come to the movies with us? We'll have a great time, and, and my mother will invite you all to go together. Well, it didn't really turn out so great because Essie did not understand racism quite yet. And this is how she begins to understand it. They go to the movie theaters, and they're just high on energy. They run through the theater, and Essie and her little sister get dragged out because they're black. They went into the white section with their friends, and no one understood. You know, they're seven years old. They didn't understand racism. They're like, well, why can't my friend come into the movie theater with me? So they get dragged out, and you know, so do the you know little white yeah. boy and girl. They get dragged out too for bringing in blacks, yeah. and they're all kind of standing out there, and they never speak to each other again. And that's he's like, okay, what's going on? And then here I put in some photographs. I don't know how well you guys can see it, but two different movie theaters. There's the Rex Theater for Colored People in Ludlin, Mississippi, below. And then on the right, there is kind of a black and white movie theater in Belzoni, Mississippi. Down here, you can see there's colored, or colored administration goes up, 10 cents, and I'm pretty sure the white administration, or, yeah, is over on this side. So they have to go upstairs and pay and be on the balcony. They weren't allowed down below in movie theaters. So at age nine, Effie May starts to figure out, oh, I can help out my mother and sustain a house if I can get a job myself. She's only nine years old, and she's doing work that like I do at my job. She's nine, and she only makes 75 cents a week. A week, 75 cents. Uh, basically cleaning her neighbor's giant house. You know, the whole thing. She's dusting, she's sweeping, she's mopping, she's organizing age nine, making very little money, but still earning two gallons of milk at the same time. You know, this sustains her mother, her siblings, and at this time her father has actually left. Um, they, her parents split up, so her mother is even more, you know, scarce on funds. How am I going to feed my children? How am I going to pay for this place? So, Essie learns that she can get a job and help out her mother. Then she realizes, hey, why do I she used to work this one job. My mother works this one job. It's full time. Mine's part time. I can work two jobs. 
So she gets a job down at the school, the school that she goes to. She earns $3 a week. I think she does some more cleaning, like a janitor kind of thing. Um, but while she's also a janitor, she learns from her teachers um, very skillful information. Um, like, basically, she learns a little bit more about racism. They teach her, well, this is what we have today. You know, the colored go here and the white go here. Um, later on, they do teach her, a specific teacher informs her about the NAACP, which is what we will do later, Civil Rights Movement Organization. Um, okay. Well, I'm just going to briefly explain that Emmett was basically just, I mean, he was murdered for no really good reason. <laughs> he down-talked a white woman at a store, her husband got angry, accidentally killed the kid. It was awful, accidentally. So Annie realizing, oh my God, this kid is just like me. You know, he was from Chicago, very intelligent, same age, just murdered for his skin color. This is when racism really starts to hit her. And about a year later, I found this quote. I was 15 years old when I started to hate people. There was another death. There was a burning of a neighbor's house. Um, it was unjustified. It was more of an arson. It was more of a murder. She could not take it anymore. And it is at this point where she goes to school and learns from her teacher, Mrs. Rice, about the NAACP, the National Association for Advancement of Colored People. Later on in her college life, she will join this organization and start to uh, kind of fight for her rights, definitely. For the rights. Forty to fifty dollars in a chicken factory weekly, going from when she was nine seventy-five cents to forty to fifty dollars a week. That is a lot of money. She used this money to save for college. She used this money to buy clothes. She also had another job, waitressing slash cooking, um, and doing the dishes occasionally. And just this was her high point in high school, earning all this money, meeting all these people, and saving for college. And then there's one last point, I just want to move along real quick here. Um, Samuel Quinn, a member of the NAACP, was shot uh, point blank back of the head. Just murdered, straight up murder. And this is the point, and he's like, no, I can't do this anymore. People are being shot for no reason. Why does it keep happening? This needs to stop. So she's an emotional wreck. She goes home, and her stepfather, Raymond, is just yelling at her for no absolute reason, like, I don't want you to be interested in the NAACP. What are you doing? You're going to get yourself shot. And it was at this point, she just, no, I have to leave. So, I just put a little quote there, ain't nobody good here, black or white. She hated her family, she hated the wife. It was plain and simple. She only liked herself. Um, which is not a bad thing. She, I think she was definitely right in saying that. So she moved down to her father's, um, hang out with him, got a job down there, and then she finished high school with high honors, graduated top of her class. And this is where we moved to college. Not enjoy that. Um, this is a little background on the college. Um, it's right on the Louisiana border, so I guess it's not really in Jackson. Um, the town has about 16,000 people, and it's predominantly black today. And the college was established in 1885 by the State Baptist Convention, and it is gone now. It's now, it, the reason it closed, it merged with Alcorn College and then just kind of fizzled out and it's nothing, which is good because it wasn't really good. Thing. She doesn't get all A's, which is the first for her, and she doesn't really understand. She thinks it's because she's black. It probably was. Um, but she does start a tumbling group at Tuvalu. She meets a boy and they're both really good gymnasts and they start this group and people start to like her a little more. They start to think, oh, she's actually good at things and she also joins the NWA. And it started out by a bunch of white people wanting to give blacks, it started by both blacks and whites wanting to give black people a better education than what they would receive after slavery, slavery was abolished and it just started by giving basic education like all grades anyone who wanted to learn could come and now it is a college island um, 
he, she would do pray-ins where they would go into churches they weren't allowed into and they would just pray. Um, they, she worked a little bit with SNCC, SNCC, and CORE, and Tuvalu actually got added to the FBI's enemies list during this time because they were very involved in the civil rights movement. So, of 1962, she is in a town called Canton, I believe. Um, she's canvassing, so she's trying to get voters, more black voters, so that they can have a little more control over who's running the country or just running the town. She's working with Joan Trumpauer. That's a picture. She was, it was her mugshot, actually, because she was arrested <laughs> several times. Um, and one time she is trying to get back to Tuvalu. There is a drunk white man at the bus station. He starts yelling at them. He's like sexually harassing them, doing all these terrible things. And she just, it was just an example of awful things that happened to her. But she kept trying to get the vote. She kept working for for it. She's also a little bit involved in SNCC, and it started in 1960. It was inspired from the sit-ins in Nashville. Um, they also were known for the Freedom Ride, where they took the buses all the way down through the South, um, and they were at the March on Washington. It still existed, but it's not really doing much today. Um, it was really, it really wanted to get the vote, and so now it's not doesn't really have a big thing it's working for. She did attend the March on Washington with Martin Luther King. Um, she, the way she got there was an integrated car, and she was kind of nervous about that. I remember she was just like, I don't know if this is right, um, which is interesting because everyone in the car was all going for the same cause, but it was still a very tense situation. Um, there was over 250,000 people there. No arrests, it was very peaceful. Um, I'm sure you all know about this. And finally, we have the Freedom Summer, which was a big event, a big time by CORE, trying to get, again, trying to use the vote. She's canvassing, she's handing out flyers, she's working really hard. Um, she finally gets the letter that she can graduate, her credits all work out. She goes home, only one family member, she has a huge family, only one family member attends her graduation. And the book ends with her in a car heading to Canton, and it's just, it kind of breaks off at an interesting point. It's just like, she doesn't know what's going to happen, she doesn't know if she's ever going to get the equality she deserves, and it's, I wonder. So we're just not going to associate ourselves with you, because for her joining into all these groups, um, there was an incident back at her home where I think some man or police officer had showed up and had a little conversation with her mother and uh, siblings. So it was getting to the point where it's dangerous to her family, so they had to stop all connections or contact with her because she wanted to stay in these organizations and fight for her rights, which I think was a pretty cool thing. She had a lot of guts. Very smart, smart woman. She got beat up. Too, and she just didn't, they didn't break her spirit. So, I love this one. She wrote a book. <laughs> yeah, like she wrote a yeah. book. Like, There's not really a lot of information on the internet right. about her either. There really isn't. I even tried to contact her at one point, and yeah. it's, it, she is so evasive. And even, like, she has people that write about her, but anything that's written comes from her book. Mm -hmm. Like, it's she's really, really evasive. Yeah. There's not a lot of information.